If you're into the world of amp sims, I'm sure you've thought of or have tried using a real guitar head with impulse responses. But have you ever thought about doing this the other way around? We're gonna continue the recording the perfect guitar tone series by getting a little bit experimental because sometimes when you're looking for perfection, you have to think a bit outside of the box. On the subject of boxes, I actually have a guest with me today. It's a big square box. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He only speaks gent. Let me translate. Um, basically what he's saying is, hey, my name is Mesa 4x12. You've heard me on your favorite albums for at least the last 20 years. So Mesa, is, is there a reason that someone might want to use uh, an amp sim with a real cab like yourself? No, you also spoke breakdown. This guy, I tell you, always full of surprises. So let me translate one more time. If you're in the world of amp sims, chances are you have lots and lots of them, right? So you can bypass the cabs on most of those. That means you'll have the flavor of all different kinds of amps and you can get tons of different sounds off of one cab. Now to do this, all you need are a few things. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and today I'm gonna be breaking down how to use amp sims with real cabinets and the few things that you need to make it happen. First off, you're going to need an interface, something you can send a signal out of. You're gonna need a cable. You will need a power amp and of course, a cabinet. And for microphones today, we are using the Slate ML1. The reason we're using the Slate ML1 is because we're being experimental, right? This will give us a lot of different mic options, a lot of condensers, and I know that Joey loves condensers on cabs. It's kind of what he's known for. So let's see what we can get out of it. So before we hop in and I show you how you would do this to send a signal that's already recorded out, we're just gonna pick up a guitar right now that's connected to my interface. Um, this guy right here, literally, cable going into my interface. It is then sending out to this power amp into this cab. This microphone is also going into my Audient ID44. So let's hear how this sounds. I'm using Toneforge uh, Misha Mansour uh, on default settings. Sounds pretty great right off the bat, right? But let's see what would happen if we hopped into a DAW and we're reamping a song or something like that. I think that'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys. So let me show you where we ended up and uh, then show you how we got there. So yeah, right now I am using Toneforge Jeff Loomis, uh, a little preset I made. And right now the amp sim is being sent out to this cab that's right next to me. I don't know. Can, can you guys see that in the shot? I don't know. But anyways, it's right there. Um, and that's why I kind of got my headphones on because I don't want my ears blown off. Uh, let's mess around with this a bit as we listen back to it. All right, dope. So, oh, shout out to uh, Chris Wiseman from uh, Shadow of Intent and Currents because uh, this, this is from our old band and he recorded the guitars for this. So, you know, uh, this was a production we wrote together. Let's hop into this, but actually I wanna show you guys what the mic is doing, right? Cause we just, I, I messed around with the amp for a second. Watch what the, the Slate ML1 module is doing. Like if I bypass this, watch what happens. Yeah, we ain't doing all that, right? So on this mic module, I have it somewhere in the middle of the intensity. If I move it more to the left, you get more like a bitey kind of sound and it smooths over the more you move it to the right. So let me show you that too. All 
All right, like sounding, yeah, sounding pretty good. Let's, now we're gonna, let's see, cause we got this routed out now. Um, it's being sent out of here and I'm recording it into the track right here. Let's, uh, let's record a take of this. All right, so let's do that with the other side. This time I'm gonna show you what it sounds like a little bit without the effects that were on that chain. All right, now that we have that on both sides, let's do it without uh, with everything off except the virtual mic because we need that. That's the that's the microphone source and preamp. All right, cool, right? But obviously, 4K. You know, this is the JST channel. You hear that 4K? Or, and if you don't, you're about to. So check this. This is the first time I think I ever brought up 4K on the JST channel. That's, that's kind of wild. Okay, but yeah, you see how much that's doing? Then we add the traditional, you know, Andy Sneap style uh, band on here. Now that's sounding pretty good, but a lot of that sizzly top, there's a couple ways that I could approach this. I could either use uh, something like Rec2 or Fab Filter or whatever, but this will just let me take off what's going on above 10K. And you can really hear this when I do this. Pay attention. That's kind of crazy, right? And remember, we're using amp sims in a real cab right now. Like this is something I definitely got to get into more. Um, I'm really liking how that sounding is giving me that bite in the air off the cab. I'm not in a treated crate. Well, I mean, my room's treated, but you know, I don't have a bunch of baffles up surrounding it, none of that stuff. And it sounds pretty great to me in the song, you know, uh, linear EQ. I actually don't think that I need that anymore. And if you wanted to tame that bite, cause here's the question, do you want that top end bite or not? Cause I could do all that without touching EQ just on this mic. And there you have it getting a getting a tone off of a real cab and an amp sim i mean it's kind of wild that we're at this point right now i really enjoyed how this sounded at the end and uh I'm, I'm curious if this is something you guys will try later on but while i'm here let's move around this mic on this cab for a second and see what happens i'll leave it on the same chain right quick note if you use linear eq it will like uh, have some kind of delay compensation going on um so yeah, I'll just do this without that. Let me, let me do that on the other side real quick. See what's going on here. That's from this. 
just for this little like little tough guy part here. All right, let's let's listen to what we came up with. Okay, I'm enjoying that more than I like the tone that I had before. So one thing I love about being able to move around on the cab like that is your options are literally limitless. I just picked a microphone and I'll show you one last thing before I go. See, let's 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 play different mics. Yeah, so the changing of microphone with the change of placement on the cab gives you a whole nother combination. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this and uh, and make something out of it. So I'm curious what you all thought about this experiment. Is this something that you would wanna do in the future and who do you think it's most useful for? There's definitely a certain kind of feeling to being able to move a mic around and then having tons of different options of what kind of mic it's going to be, what kind of head it's going to be. Cause you know, there's some heads that I have in here that are over a couple thousand dollars and realistically you can get an entire library of amp sims for the price of one of those heads it's just reality this is definitely something i'm going to be doing in the future does this spark the idea for something new for you to try leave it down in the comments and i'll catch you guys next week to continue the series of recording the perfect guitar tone if you're an engineer on the come up give this video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe you only have to do it one time and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops you know the location until next time i'm out of here mic drop i really didn't care about that 15 dollars mic later